In this calculus lesson, let's go ahead and take a look at more examples on how we can evaluate limits algebraically. So this is just a continuation from last time. The limit as x approaching 1, and let's say we have 1 over x plus 2 minus 1 over 3 over x minus 1. As always, we should plug in this number into all the x's and see what happens. When we do that, we will have 1 over 1 plus 2 minus 1 over 3 over 1 minus 1. And you guessed it, we get 0 over 0. Meaning, we will have to do more work in order to figure out the answer for this limit question. So, what exactly can we do for all this? We have a complex fraction here. That means we have small fractions inside of a big one. To simplify a complex fraction, let's go ahead and multiply the top and bottom by the lowest common denominator of the small fractions, which we are looking at the 3 and also the x plus 2. So let's multiply this right here, and we will do the same thing on the bottom. And now let's just go ahead and work this out. Here we have the limit as x approaching 1. So let's take this, multiply it in. We see that these x plus 2 will cancel, so first we will have the 3. And then in between, we still have the minus. Then we take this, multiply with 1 third. 3 and 3 cancel, so in this case, we actually have x plus 2. But make sure you keep a parenthesis. And then let me tell you guys a secret. The reason we multiply by the lowest common denominator was to fix the top, right? So we are not going to multiply the bottom. Just keep it. But I will write down the 3 first, and then the x minus 1, and then the x plus 2. Now here's an extremely common mistake that I've seen many students make in the past. They see that we have the x plus 2 here and also the x plus 2 here. What they will do is just cancel this and that. We cannot do that because on the top, we still have to work out the 3 minus parentheses x plus 2. And in fact, I will tell you another secret. If we are looking at the limit as x approaching 1 and we have a 0 over 0 case, then I will tell you. You can expect the factor x minus 1 to be cancelled. Alright? If you have x approaching 1, then you should cancel out the x minus 1 somehow. If you have x minus if you have x approaching 17, then you can expect x minus 17, the factor, to be cancelled. Now let's just go ahead and distribute the top. We get the limit as x approaching 1. Distribute this and that, we just get 3 and then minus x and then minus 2. Be really careful with the minus signs. And then here we have the 3 times x minus 1, x plus 2. All right, on the top, what we can do is just uh, 3 minus 2. So let's just go ahead and combine them. And then I will still have the limit, x approaching 1. Let's write down the x term first, which is negative x. 3 minus 2 is plus 1. And then the bottom stays the same. Now, if you take a look at what we have here and here, they are almost the same, but not quite, because on the top is negative x plus 1, on the bottom is x minus 1. But it's okay, because what we can do is just go ahead and factor out a negative on the top. So this is the limit as x approaching 1. Factoring out negative, and then we will get x minus 1 inside. This is correct because if you distribute this in, negative x and then plus 1, just like what we have originally. And then for the bottom, you just keep it again. I know it's a lot of writing, but just kind of relax and have patience. This is like doing yoga, just relax. But here is the most exciting part. Let's go ahead and cancel the x minus 1 and x minus 1. Aha, I told you the x minus 1 was going to be cancelled. And we just did. Finally, we plug in the 1 into the remaining x. So in this case, we are going to get on the top is negative, on the bottom is 3 times, and then we have 1, and then we add 2 to it. 
So finally, we have negative 1 over, this is 3 times 3, so we have 9. Final answer, negative 1 over 9. Let's take a look at another example. Let's say we have number 3. This is the limit as x approaching 3. And let's have this example. It's another very common one. The one with square root. That's a square root of 5x plus 1. And then after the square root, we have a minus 4. And then for the bottom, we have x minus 3. So to simplify this thing, what we will do is the so-called the count you get. And by the way, we shall say that when we plug in 3 into all the x's, we will get 0 over 0. And uh, you can expect, because we have x approaching 3, so the x minus 3 should be cancelled somehow. And we will use the count you get, like I mentioned. So we are going to multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 5x plus 1. And then we change the minus to a plus. And after that, we still have that 4. And then we maintain the same thing on the bottom. Right? So same thing. Do the same thing on the bottom like this. All right. The reason that we multiply out the conjugate is because when we have a minus b times a plus b. Let me actually do like this. You see how the first term and the second term are the same, but the first in between is just a minus, but the second in between is a plus. If you multiply this, you are going to get a squared minus b squared. So this will give us the following. We will then have the limit as x approaching 3. All we have to do is the first term, and then we square that minus the second term. And then we square that. And then the first term is the square root 5x plus 1. And the second term is 4. Again, for the bottom, just leave it. Do not multiply it out. So square root of 5x plus 1 plus 4. Now for the top, as we can see, square, square root cancel. And then for this, we just have to work it out. So we are looking at the limit as x approaching 3. And then we will just have 5x plus 1 minus 16. And then the bottom is x minus 3 times square root 5x plus 1 plus 4. Well, for the top, we can see that we just have to do plus 1 minus 16. So that's minus 15. And uh, let me just write this down right here. So limit x approaching 3. And then we have... 5x minus 15, and then x minus 3, 5x plus 1, and then plus 4. And then 5x minus 15, we can actually factor out of 5, right? So limit as x approaching 3. Factoring out the 5, we get x minus 3 on the top. And then x minus 3 times the square root 5x plus 1 plus 4. See, I told you. When we have x approaching 3, then we can expect the x minus 3 and x minus 3 to be cancelled. So we know we are on the right track. And then finally, plugging the 3 into the x, on the top we have 5. On the bottom, we are going to get square root of 5 times the x, which is now 3. And then plus 1. After that, make sure you add 4. So on the top is 5, on the bottom, here, 5 times 3 is 15, plus 1 is 16, take the square root for that is 4. So the first square root will give us 4, but we have another 4, so altogether we get 8. Therefore, the answer for this question is 5 over 8. Make sure that you master these two types of questions when we have the complex fraction and when we have a square root, when we are talking about a limit as x approaching a number. Check out the next video, we'll talk about x going to infinity.